start calling it the no trial list. We could call the assassination list the same thing because that's what these are. These are putting people on a list to kill them, to take away their rights to move about, to take away their rights to own firearms. That's what he's proposing now. You never know how you got on that list. You don't even know you're on that list. You're not confronted with your accusers. You don't have a chance to uh, contest this in court. Due process under the Sixth Amendment is completely suspended under these lists that Obama has been creating. And yet, the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court doesn't have a problem with the Sixth Amendment and due process being completely eviscerated to the point of assassinating American citizens. Because that's precisely what happened with Anwar al -Awlaki. So this appeals court has now said that they're not going to allow these memos to be released. The ACLU says, we strongly disagree that these crucial legal memos can lawfully be kept secret. In a democracy, there should be no room for secret law, and the courts should not play a role in perpetuating it. There should not be any room for secret trials, secret capital punishment either in a democracy. That is fundamentally what is wrong with our society, and we're not going to get any help from the courts in that. Stay with us when we come back. Rob Dew and our political analyst Richard Reeves are going to talk about how the major political parties rigged the system. We'll be right back. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Vote for Jeb, or you're just fucking stupid. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world and it's called shilajit and it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago as a matter of fact this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite thousands of years ago up in the himalayan mountains and in tibet and we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple years but we couldn't get an organic form right i mean so I, let's explain i mean we, this stuff's so good we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up, from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming out. oil is really from decomposed a animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But So, so this is a true fossil uh, source? I mean, explain it to me. It is, uh, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over 7,000 different medicinal herbs and plants. And, it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and... And during the summertime and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station, so support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, sitting in on these last two segments. And uh, the guy sitting next to me basically is instrumental in getting Roger Stone and Donald Trump onto the Alex Jones Show. That's Richard Reeves. He's been a longtime employee of InfoWars. And we're going to be sending him out on the road to do some political correspondence in these Republican primaries and Democratic primaries and caucuses that are going to be happening in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. Those are the big three that kind of set the, the tone for this. But what we're going to be discussing today is how the Democrats have actually infiltrated the Republican Party, and they're going to be stealing this Republican nomination away from Donald Trump for Jeb Bush, and Richard's going to be explaining how they're going to do that. Well, Rob, thank you for having me on. And the Democrats, via the New World Order, definitely have a plan on how they're going to try to steal this election. They've adjusted primary dates. They've adjusted the way the delegates are proportioned. In some states, winner take all. In some states, they're uh, proportional. So we're really going to be having to watch for the dirty tricks by the GOP and the RNC. So we are really going to have to be on our toes. And we saw this on the last two primary seasons with Ron Paul just basically getting Iowa stolen from him. Uh, I, like it was Rick Santorum in the last election where he suddenly came up with this uh, fairy dust money to just blitz the area and, and kind of steal that. that not, and then he disappeared. He That's was just right. a ringer. He was thrown in there to take away the momentum from Ron Paul. So then... No one could uh, give them legitimacy. Kind of what they're doing with Trump. Trump is an outsider compared to the rest of the GOP establishment, and they are afraid of him. That's right, Rob. And even prior to that, 2008 with Huckabee, that was a total That's disaster. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yes, now we can watch for the dirty tricks to be coming in. The uh, Republicans are dead set on making sure that Donald Trump does not get this nomination. And by that, I mean the Republican establishment, along with the Democrats that have infiltrated the party. Uh, it's going to be really tricky to do this. And what it was ultimately with this, what's called the splitter strategy, mm -hmm. is we had the Republicans gather up at some point in the past and they had a huddle and they decided, you know what, Jeb Bush is going to be our nominee for 2016. How do we get that done? So what they looked at is the splitter strategy. We all know that one of the mottos of the New, New World Order is divide and conquer. Right. So what they did is they came up with all these candidates. That's why you have Jeb Bush. That's why you have Marco Rubio. That's why you have Santorum and Kasich. And, and Kasich is basically a hitman. He's right. just brought in to just hit Trump constantly. No substance to his attacks. He's basically worthless in the polls. I mean, he's pulling at like 1% maybe. That's and right. That's so, his only job. But he's still in it. So for the GOP, he sits there and he's got plenty of money. He's, yeah. he's well-funded. But he can sit there and hit the barbed wire for the GOP and keep attacking Trump like a, a chihuahua. That's a great analogy. Yeah, he, heels, he's a World know? War I so, barbed wire guy. He just he, jumps on it and lets everybody else run over top of him. There you go. So that's it. So they came up with the, sp the splitter strategy. But their splitter strategy didn't take into account Donald Trump. That's true. And that's the thing. Uh, the splitter strategy before Donald Trump was that they would get Jeb Bush, Rick Santorum. Uh, they would get Jindal. They would get, they, they didn't mind even uh, Ted Cruz and Rand Paul stepping in there because what they would do is bring in more candidates like Huckabee, mm -hmm. like uh, we talked Santorum. about earlier, Santorum, to yeah. split their support because they did a lot of polling. I remember getting a polling call 
back in 2006 during a governor's race here in Texas, I got a call, a polling call, would you like to see Jeb Bush as president? That was back in 2006. That's nine years ago, folks. So that's how long the Jeb Bush being the nominee of the Republican Party in 2016 uh. has been in the works because I got that call and so did a friend of mine and it was unbelievable. So what they've done is since 2012, 2013, 2014, the Republican Party with the Democrats and the NWO have conspired to set up the splitter strategy where every time uh, Ted Cruz gets in or Rand Paul gets in, Jeb Bush gets in, what they do is, all right, what other outside candidate that's with us, with the GOP establishment, what other candidates can we bring in to help fracture and split those votes? Because they know, bottom line, the, all the support that Jeb Bush can generate is between 15 and 20 percent of the electorate. So they actually devised a way by manipulating the way the primaries fall, the, the way the primary dates fall, the way the delegates are proportioned or winner take all, the way that works. They've done all that to rig it so that Jeb Bush could have won with 15 to 25 percent of the electorate support. That's and, all. And they made these rule changes, what, back in 2012? They started looking at those rules back in 2012 yeah. during the RNC convention back then. Uh, many people know about how Ron Paul got ripped off back in uh, the 2012 election. They made those rule changes back then, and they also kept modifying and tinkering and tweaking like a sculpture, mm -hmm. carefully chipping away. All right, how can we set it up? We know Jeb Bush can only get 15 to 25 percent of the electorate to vote for him and come and support him in, in uh, the delegate race. So we got to rig it to where he can still beat everybody by fracturing the vote. So that's what they've done. And that's like I said, that's before they figured and calculated how Donald Trump was going to step in. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. And we saw this. I was a delegate, I think, in the 2012 election, and I went in, and I, there were several people who were, you know, pro Ron Paul people. You could tell, uh, you know, by the way they were, they didn't dress like the typical Republican. They were, they look like just, you know, normal people, not these this uppity type that you see in, in some of these rhino Republicans. But there were just enough rhinos in there to keep anything, any dissenting voice quiet and silent. And that's what they do. They, they rig these with, with their own operatives. How do that's they right. do that? Well, it's pretty simple because what happens in generally what happens in the primaries, and I think it's going to be highly different this time, which is very exciting that we are probably going to see more people vote in the Republican primary than we've had in many, many years. So it's very exciting to see that what, what's happened in the past actually has been that only a small percentage of the electorate turns out for the Republican primaries. And what that electorate that does come out and participate are the rhino factions of the Republican Party, people that have something to gain. They might be part of the military industrial complex. They might be part of the financial industrial complex. They might be part of big pharma. And, and so, you know, that's how they come in. That's how they come in and vote in these primaries and get these rhino candidates. That's how we get a John McCain in 2008. That's how we get a Mitt Romney in 2012 is because these establishment party people show up. They show up to vote, and they show up in their precinct conventions and caucuses. Right. And so you've been participating in this since, what, 2008 in the uh, caucus precinct delegate area? That's right. Here in right. Texas, it's a uh, precinct convention right. delegate process. In Iowa, they do have the caucuses. But here in Texas, the first one I ever went. Well, see, that's another thing. That's a top secret. You know, I didn't even know about precinct conventions, caucuses, et cetera, till 2006. I was... Oh, you know, yeah. Almost like 50 you, years you think old. it's just an election and they count the votes yeah. and then that's right, not how right. it works. I think it's all just popular votes. Yeah. No, no, no. We've got to get upstream to these processes within the parties because that's where the candidates come from. This is not just about Donald Trump. This is not just about the presidential candidates. This is way, way bigger than that. If we go upstream of the voting process, of the primary process, the, the way the votes are counted there, and if we go upstream of the general election process, we go up to the headwaters mm -hmm. of the political process. That's where the candidates spawn from. That's where they come from. So what we need to do is be looking at that because that, ironically, it only takes a 2 or 3% minority of people to run that operation. And then all of a sudden, all these candidates, the headwaters where they spawn from, et cetera, then it dries up, that, it dries up yeah. and a whole new slate of candidates, you know, people talk about black box voting and the fraud involved in that, which is absolutely true. We know about all that. We know that there's fraud at so many levels in our government. Happened in Florida when Jeb was governor. There you go, the mm -hmm. hanging chad mm -hmm. election. Mm -hmm. So uh, it it just never ends how much fraud we find within the, the government and the New World Order and Democrat Republican Party. 
So getting up to those headwaters, though, where these candidates come from, slowly but surely, we're seeing better candidates arise. We used to have one guy in the House that was liberty and freedom-minded, and that was Ron Paul. But now we've got the 